Welcome to Legacy Listens, where we have honest conversations with thought leaders in the financial services industry and share steps on how to build wealth intelligently. You'll hear from experts in investment management, business succession, family office services, and income and estate tax planning. Enjoy the latest episode beginning now. Welcome back to Legacy Listens. This is Matt Cole, partner and senior advisor at Legacy Planning Partners. I'm excited uh, to introduce our guest here today, John Boyer, uh, second generation of Boyer Food Markets. John, great to see you. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Yes, me too, John. And just a, just a little brief history. So John and I had a chance to meet a few months ago. Uh, our friend Wayne Herring uh, uh, had put on a workshop and John and I had a chance to catch up and and then uh, just had some great conversations and uh, which led us to our conversation here today, John. And uh, I'd love for us to start, John. So Boyer's Food Markets started in 1949 uh, by your dad, Harold Boyer. And my understanding is it started out as a corner store. And obviously we'll talk about the growth that you guys experienced. But if you could, John, just start to take us through some of the, the origin of the story of, of where it all started. Sure. Uh, my dad, uh, there was a corner store in Orisburg, which still, the building still stands there. It's right in the in, right in the center of town. It was an A&P store. Uh, my dad was the... Uh, manager of that store at 22 years old you know at that time there was probably four or five grocery stores in town on every corner you know you had your corner store and a p was going to close that store and the story is that they owed my dad two weeks vacation so for the two weeks vacation they let him have the uh equipment that was in the store and take over the lease so at 22 years old, uh, my dad started in the business, which is a, a pretty cool story. Yeah, that is very unique. You, you know, John. Uh, you know, the thought that went through my head is is uh, you know, oftentimes like we talk about ways to exit your business, and one of those ways is what's called you know liquidation or you know just selling the assets. And oftentimes, to see that business owners kind of see that as like a you know, the way they don't want to exit. And what's interesting, what you just said is it, it actually gave your dad, in this case, the opportunity to start something that that really turned into something pretty awesome. Uh, in fact, uh, as the story goes, and please add to it as you'd like, is that your, your dad and then you and your two brothers and sisters grew it from that corner store up to what is now 19 stores today, which is pretty phenomenal. And uh, that's that spreads into I saw it look like two counties in Schuylkill County and Berks County. Oh, there's there's actually four or five counties, I believe. OK. Uh, yeah. As as my brothers and sister and I, and, you know, came out of school, we all made the decision to, to get back into or to get into the, you know, the family business. We had all worked there during school, you know, all the whole, you know, routine. But as we came out of school, we all came back in, into the business. So, you know, at that time, the, the store was no longer a, a corner store, but it was a, a smaller grocery store in the town. But we knew that if uh, we were going to support all these families, we needed to grow this thing. So um, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to grow it. So uh, we took it and uh, we went from there. So if you don't mind, John, to spend a little time on you know, was that, uh, did that growth look like you guys just went out and took out a pile of debt and started opening stores like crazy? Or was it more of a slow and steady, like, hey, you know, we've got profit and everyone was in agreement to, hey, let's start up this next location. Like, what were some of the keys to, to growing growing the business? Well, we grew, we grew slow and steady. It, it seemed like there for a few years, we were buying one store a year, usually on January, you know, beginning of January. And, you know, sooner or later, it started to add up to a, a pretty significant number. We really grew, grew uh, low risk. Uh, you know, we, were, we weren't taking on a lot of debt. Uh, we were, you know, very prudent about what we did. Uh, we, we were investing a lot of money back into the business. Uh, 
um, not necessarily in the stores, but in buying new stores. And then at some point we said, you know, we, we needed to make a decision that we needed to upgrade the stores that, you know, that we were in. So, but we, uh, we grew steadily, I would say. Yeah. Low risk, that steady growth, you know, slow and steady wins the race sometimes, you know, so. And, and so for, for context here too, so I understand that your two brothers, your sister and you, you guys all came together at different time frames, but roughly it was like around the late seventies that you guys were all working together and, and driving forward. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that would be good. Yeah. My brother's about six years older than me. My sister's two years older than me. And my, I have a younger brother that's three or four years younger than me. So we, 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 we came in at different, at different times, but, uh, we all came back. So I guess we had grocery in our blood, I guess you would say. So, yeah. And part of it was we all got along, you know, we, we were, we were partners, but we were a family and uh, we all kind of were able to put our egos in our back pockets and, and do what was best for the business, uh, which, you know, isn't always easy, but uh, that's what we did. And at some point, you know, when, when you're growing up, the family business, we always said was, you know, it's at the dinner table with you, you know what I mean? But and my, I give my brother a lot of credit for this. He, you know, we're going to, we're going to separate the family from the business. We're going to have a family over here. We're going to have a business over here and, you know, never the, you know, will, will they merge? So it, it made for a good working and a good family, family dynamic. So, yeah. On that side, I think uh, you make it sound much easier than it really is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, especially with siblings, right? Because I'm, I'm sure there are times you think about, you know, when, you know, this sibling, you know, did this to that sibling, right? There's these little things that we hang on sometimes. But, you know, a lot of credit there because what I heard is, you know, you guys started, um, the sibling second generation started working together in the late 70s and, and you guys transitioned January 2020, which we'll get to. But if I do my quick math, that's that's a little over 40 years that you guys were not just brother and sister, but you guys were partners. And I mean, yep. that's that's pretty unique in and of itself. Yeah, we we worked together every day. Yeah, it was, uh, it was good. It was, it was good. So. so, John, what would you say? And this isn't necessarily a family question. This is just a general question of growing the business, which you guys obviously proved that you, you did over the 40 plus years is. What would you say the what was the most challenging uh, experience, or what was most challenging? Would you say in in that growth in that growth mode? Well, obviously, um, we we compete. They com we compete against you know the, the best, the biggest retailers in the area, the state, the nation. You know, so you're competing against you're competing against the big boys. Um, I think finding our our image, our you know, getting recognition, you know, as not a small mom pop operation was you know it was a challenge. Uh, we used to be an IGA, which kind of had the connotation of a mom and pop, mm -hmm. and so trying to get our name out there and get name recognition, and you know, trying to. Uh, let people know who we were and what, what we were as we grew into, moved into these, uh, you know, new areas. So, mm -hmm. Excellent. Even, so even, even today, you know, before we, I, I would tell people we had 18 stores and they were, they'd be, Oh, I thought you had like four or five, you know, so our, we weren't getting recognized for the size and you know the the amount of, of buying power etc that we could bring to the market mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about and I, I see this on your website red shirt service well as as we grew you know if you're going to compete you got to compete on something mm -hmm. and you're competing with walmart's of the world the aldi's of the world you're competing so you got to differentiate yourself you got to find your niche and we tried to find our niche with service, you know, convenience, service. Most of our stores were in town, uh, you know, easy to get to, easy to park. Um, so finding that niche and one, one, the one niche that we tried to 
bring to the table was service. And, you know, there's always somebody in the store. There's always somebody there to greet you, uh, you know, hiring people that have that same philosophy. And, and a lot of that comes right from my dad. I mean, my dad was just, he was just a nice guy. And, you know, and that, uh, that, uh, what would you call it? Mentality just permeated the whole organization, I think. So, and it, it, it kind of stuck. So red shirt service, we, you know, you can, somebody once said, yeah, you can just stick a, a label on it, you know, red shirt service, but if you don't live up to it, you know, it's, it's, it's not worth anything. In fact, it's a negative if you're not living up to that, that red shirt service. So it, it, it served us well. That's uh that's great advice uh, that I heard from you right there, which is understand and drive to your niche and then be accountable to it. And uh, that's great advice. Thank you. So let's, Fast forward a little bit. So January 2020, uh, your two brothers and sister, you guys uh, decided to make a transition. And uh, just curious. So, you know, what, what was there a point in time or, or what was a trigger to, you know, thinking like, hey, maybe maybe now's the time to transition or, you know, hey, that's that's this been 40 great years. Do you mind sharing kind of like how you guys got to that point? Sure. Well, we, we knew we had to do something with it. Um, no third generation was in the business. Uh, you know, you say, oh, we build this thing now. What do you do with it? Uh, we had a we had a really strong management team in place. Um, over the last five or so years before that, we had given them a piece of the action or they had bought a piece of the action. So they were invested in, in, in the business. And that just seemed like a, a natural transition um, with our types of stores and the variety of stores. There was no big, well, none of the big guys were going to come in and, and, and buy Boyer's food markets all, all in one, you know, they would have taken two or three or broken it up. So you would have had a, would have had a, you know, a whole different feel, but, with the management group that we had, uh, we were able to keep it local. We were able to keep it whole. We were able to, you know, continue to do the things that we were doing. And in fact, you know, the management group had been very involved in running the business for, for a number of years. Uh, you know, uh, they, they were really driving the train. So uh, it was a pretty easy transition. Uh, they were interested. We knew at some point we had a, we had a trans, tra transaction. Uh, at that point in time, interest rates were at historically low levels, so that that was a that was a good time. Um, and structuring the deal the way we did, we knew that we wanted them to be successful. So we were not only the operators, now we are also the landlords in a lot of these locations. So their success, our success was, you know, very well, very much uh, dependent on their success. So, uh, yeah, that, that's how we ended up doing that. It, it, it evolved over, you know, a few years. Um, we had actually... We had actually all retired, I believe, a year before the transaction, you know, took place. So uh, it was, it was, it was a pretty good, pretty good transaction, and I think it was a good deal for everybody. So that's great. And and John, what would you say? What what stands out in your memory most about that that process of of transferring, transitioning the business? What stands out the most? Well, I think, I think the deal itself was was pretty easy because we knew the we knew the buyers yeah. <laughs> um, we knew they were we would be able to keep it in local ownership which, which was important to us i mean uh someone from out of the area or one of the big guys wouldn't wouldn't be able to operate the way we did the way these stores need to be operated because of the size the locations etc so uh I think the process was, like I said, the process itself, you know, was 
was pretty seamless. Uh, so because of the relationship we had with the buyer. So. And how about the advisor team? Did, did you guys, what advisors, if any, did you have involved in the process with, was, you know, was there negotiation that went on between you and your family and, and the, the management team that was buying you guys out? What, what did that look like from a, an advisor support side of things? Well, um, obviously we had, you know, a valuation on the business that, you know, we thought was the value and, you know, they thought they knew what they could afford to pay to make the thing work. So, and apparently the two numbers were, were, were close enough together that, that a deal got done, you know? So, but, mm -hmm. you know, we had tax, tax ramifications that we needed to, to work our way through, you know, you know, all the financials, you know, the attorneys, all that, all kind of, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we were able to put the deal together uh, pretty, pretty seamlessly, I, I think. Uh, so. We all had the same goal in mind, let's put it that way. So. Was it challenging at all to, to, uh, I'll say from an operations perspective, because you were, you were more, you professionally were more on the operations side of helping build the business. Uh, was there any challenge as far as letting go of the reins? Uh, I, had, I had, we had done that earlier. Yeah. And I, it, we, we had, we had pretty much let the management team run, run, run the business. Uh, you know, we were there, we were serving our roles, which, you know, sometimes was, you know, a little tricky when, you know, your name's on the building, but you're not really in charge, you know? So, um, uh, there was some of that, but uh, we knew that those guys were the guys to to to, to do it and, and make it make it successful going forward. So, yeah. In uh, so, so just a thought around. So so I'm big up. I'm big on the coaching side of things. Uh, just in in, in my uh, I'll say youth age with sports. I know you're a big sports guy. Uh, you know, the team, the best teams I were, was on is not necessarily because the players were, were great players is because the coaches were great coaches and helped develop the players. Well, we, we were very fortunate in a few times in our business career to come across people who were mentors and, uh, advisors. And, you know, we had, we had a, we had an advisor and early early on and at some point he said you guys have outgrown me and he pointed us to the next guy who really really turned us into a professionally run he always said you want to be a you want to be a family business or you want to be a professionally run business well take your choice and you know i, I guess we figured professionally run was probably better uh in the long run so uh yeah we we were very fortunate we've always somebody told me always surround yourself with you know smart people and uh take their advice you know and and we were able to do that and uh, sometimes it's, it, sometimes it wasn't easy you know when people push you to make the hard decisions you know uh it, it, that's not always easy but it's uh at the end of the day it's usually the right thing to do and, and was that coaching and consulting? Was that just for the family or, or did, did you guys do that for the, your, your key people management team as well? Uh, it was mostly for us, but uh, you know, at one point we did bring in um, more like a culture guy, you know, to develop a culture kind of thing. So that, but that I wasn't too much, in, we weren't too much involved in that. That was more the, you know, the management, but uh, yeah. Excellent. So, John, let's uh, fast forward to post transition. So, what would you say today? You know, what what if anything do you do you miss about the you know being being in the day to day, or, or is there anything you look back and you say, oh, I kind of missed that, or tell us well, a little I, bit where you're at today. I I miss the people. I mean, e everywhere I go, you know, people. Oh, John Boyer, you know, you, you get, I said, if you're in the grocery business for 50 years, you get to meet a lot of people. And yeah. so, um, 
I, I got to meet a lot of a lot of great people, and and that was that was really that was really good. Even today, you know, I go into some of these towns where we have a store or we had a store, and you know, I know people, and it, it's pretty cool. And yeah, the other thing I miss is I love business. I love talking about business. I love reading about business. I I, I just be, between business and sports, I could show you my bookcase here. It's either yeah, sports or, or, or something about business. So I just love business and talking about it, working on it. So that I, I, I miss that, but I try to fill that gap as best as I can. Yeah. So one, one, one of the, one of the things that I, I, I don't think we touched or maybe I told you before, but I retired right into COVID. So that was, you know, <laughs> not, not the best. Let's just put it that way. So. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so let's talk a little bit about life after the business. So, so you're a you're a Blue Mountain High School grad. You're a University of Delaware Blue Hen yep. alumni. Uh, you're actively involved in uh, uh, in the entrepreneurial program at the University of Delaware in uh, economic development uh, with Sedco. Uh, you and your wife have four kids and eight grandchildren. So if you could tell tell us a little bit about your next chapter and 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 how you're continuing to drive value. Well, when I I retired, I was 62, I think, somewhere in that neck of the woods and I still felt like I had more to give. You know, I I I I wasn't done. Um so but I I missed I thought something's going to find me you know some one of these days something's going to pop on my computer and say john boyer this is what you need to be doing well uh you know that 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 didn't work you know so you got to go out and find things to do what what you enjoy um i try to always have something on my schedule just something that keeps my my mind occupied my you know, my, I, I think I said before, I've, I've hung around with a lot of smart people in my life. I've been blessed to be around really smart, good people. And I've learned a lot. You know, I, when I was 25, I thought I was the smartest guy in the room. You know, I thought I knew everything. Well, I didn't, I just knew how to work hard. Now I, I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of knowledge that I'm able to get from all kinds of smart people. And you know, I, I felt, you know, I still got, I still got a little more juice in me, something, something to, something to give back. So, uh, try to find that, you know, what, what, what is it that, what is it that'll keep me, you know, for the, who knows, next, you know, X number of years uh, involved. So. And, and John, uh, you spend some time with, with other business owners now, is that correct? I have, I, you know, I, I try to, talk to you talk to people i think some people have sought me out you know who are you know transitioning you know what's it like you know you know trying to try to pass on some of that knowledge that people gave to me to them so that was i enjoyed that i enjoy that yeah and, and tell us a little bit about uh your work with uh, university of delaware and the entrepreneurial program yeah that that just really lights me up that that is that is the coolest thing. I mean, it's these young adults who are in college and they're doing the, they, they're starting these businesses, you know, um, it's, it's, and the, the people you meet, the kids you meet, the young adults you meet are just, they're fantastic. You know, and I always say anybody that tells you complains about the youth of America needs to go to one of these and, and meet these, meet these people because, uh, you know, for these, they're the future leaders they're, they're and they're doing great things. And some of these have gone on to continue to start these, keep these businesses going after they're out of college. And I, I'm fortunate to be pretty involved in a couple of them. And it's just, it's just really, it's just really neat. So, yeah, I love it. That's exciting. And uh, well done pouring into 
younger generations and and sharing your experience with them and that's exciting and and i mean while technology continues to to evolve and i mean young folks it's like they can take some of that knowledge and and apply to you know the businesses that might be missing some of that so that's a that's outstanding so john we're going to go here towards our last question so our last question is if if there's a business owner listening to this podcast right now and throughout this podcast may have thought about, hmm, when might I transition or, or the, that first thought of transition is now crossing their mind. What is one piece of advice that you would give? I have two. Two pieces of advice. Go for two. You got it. <laughs> well, the first one is, and I, I, don't, I don't remember who, who, who said it, but they told you're only going to do this once. Mm-hmm. You're only going to sell your business once. So you better do it right. So, you know, if you're going to do it, if you're going to transition, you don't get it. You don't get a second, you know, strike. It's, it, it's, it's all or nothing. So you got to do it right. So that involves, you know, planning. And the second thing is, you know, start, start now. I mean, I always it's a means to an end. So you got to have that end, that end in sight at all times. Where do you want to get the business to? You know, so you got to work your way backwards from where do I want to get this business to? And that means having a business plan, a financial plan for yourself, you know, which is you can't transition if you can't afford to do it. And you got to have a mental plan, which, you know, I'm not sure I was, that that for me was where I kind of missed the boat. You know, I I I was mentally not really ready to uh, to transition and, and and to retire, and I struggled with that for a while. So, but uh, those those three things, you know, the business plan, the financial plan, and the mental plan for yourself. What are you gonna do with? I, I retired with the same time as as my spouse, and we we are we, we are best friends but we are now together 24 7 you know so it's it's an adjustment for her it's an adjustment for me so you gotta you gotta prepare for those stuff that stuff because it's the mental part of it is is a lot you know for me I always say everybody that looked at me said, oh, John Boyer, Boyer's Food Markets, right? It rolls off the tongue, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you are John Boyer of Boyer's Food Markets. Well, when you lose that, you lose that identity, I guess, you know, you got to create a new, create a new identity, which, you know, maybe I overestimate, maybe I overestimate that, but um, you got to figure out who you want to be after you're no longer that guy or that that person in that in that business that you created it's your baby you know you if if you built this business it's 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 who you are it's what you did it's it's and but as a wise man always told me it's not who you are it's what you do you know for me a lot of it was it's who i am you know so um yeah so the mental the mental part is something that you really need to you can put x number of bucks in the bank and be good for the rest of your life but if you don't have a mental plan to 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 be ready for that to to be ready for your future you know it's it's a tough it's a tough goal that's great advice john and i would agree with you I, i think it's often underestimated the the mental side of a transition and and uh there there's things that we can do to to prepare for that and to try to create some vision and actually try to get ourselves into that seat before we actually do it. Um, but it's easier said than done, but uh, uh, I appreciate you, your willingness to share that. I appreciate your willingness to share your family story. And uh, wow, it's great to see that uh, Boyer's food markets are continuing to thrive and, and uh, would definitely encourage our, our listeners that, Hey, if, if uh you uh, are in the area and and get a chance to go into a, a Boyer's food market. Go check it out. Go go check out that uh, we would call it the red red shirt service. Yeah. And uh, 
Uh, John, thank you very once again. I appreciate your time here today. I most importantly appreciate your, your advice and your insight and your wisdom. Thank you very much. Can I just give you a personal plug? Yeah, sure. I'm not, yeah, it's, and this has been paid for, so go for it. <laughs> so I met, I met Matthew and the second time we met, we were going to have, have lunch or lunch or breakfast and it kind of fell apart. So we ended up going somewhere else to, to, to have our little meeting. And as we're walking into the, uh, into the, uh, I think it was a Dunkin' Donuts, Matt stops, picks up some trash on the parking lot and sticks it in the trash can. And I thought, you know, that says a lot about who, who Matt is, you know, and uh, I, I, you can tell a lot about people by, the, by some of the little things that they do. So I just wanted to, I didn't, it didn't go unnoticed. Let's put it that way. Thank you, John. I, I greatly appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I, yeah it's, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all for today's episode of Legacy Listens. Thank you for joining us. For questions, visit us at legacy-online.com where you'll find more content and information. If you enjoyed today's discussion, consider subscribing to receive future episodes or sharing this episode with a friend.